and Ash Williams. Welcome to Stockport County Live. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, I feel like this is the time we, we should be speaking about the season that's just finished and the Euros that are up and coming, but uh, obviously we're not doing um, for, for obvious reasons. So before we go into football, how are you finding lockdown? Yeah, all right, not too bad. Um, yes, that, no, normally now it's starting as a player, you're looking, at, uh, especially after the playoffs finished, which would have been yesterday in my league, um, I'm looking forward to your holidays and there's no holidays. So, uh, but all right, not too bad. I, I had my first day uh, of training today at Bristol. So um, I'm down in Bristol now and um, it's been all right. I don't, I'm busy. I've got, I've got three kids who are nine, seven and five. So people are like, oh, they're so bored. And I'm like, I've got 12 hour shifts in my house. I don't get a minute's <laughs> break. Yeah, I, I can uh, completely relate there. As, as a player, you mentioned you're going back and, beginning those early sessions now or those first sessions back um feel free to say you can't go into too much information but what's the mood around camps like what are, what are players like i mean they don't know how leagues are going to end up they don't, they don't really know i don't think anyone really knows what's going to happen over the next few weeks so as a player what, what's, what's the mood in the camp like yeah i think that um well first day back today the, the mood was i didn't we didn't see everyone because obviously the whole going in groups, small groups, and you don't really get to see the, the other lads so much, really. Um, but it felt a little bit for a player like pre-season going back. But I just think on the, the general, it's just uncertainty where, you know, I've been I'm, I've been in football now for what, a good, a good level for 18 years, and I've never experienced anything like this. Just the fact that even now we're going back to training and we don't really know what's going to happen. We don't know when the first game will be. We don't know when the last game will be or what will happen. So um, it's just uncertainty, really. And I think that you just got to try and roll with it and and just and just see what happens, and then and then do your best to deal with that. Really, as as a player, as a, as a player at such a level that, that you are, um, I can imagine it, it. It's incredibly frustrating. You want to be playing out uh, every week, training as, as often as you can, keeping your your body and your fitness and your game at the level that you're so used to keeping it at, mentally, when you're told, uh, and certainly over the last few weeks, you can't even leave the house, you, you know, what, what does that do to you? Does it, are you sitting there, reaching? I know you've got kids to look after, but at the same time, you want to stay on your game as well. Mentally, what kind of headspace are you in? Well, for me, uh, it's, not, it's, it's not a problem because I kind of had uh, a bit of a practice run at this before, so... After last summer, I played for Wales and then I didn't sign for a team at all until the end of August. So I had, what was that? I don't know, six, eight weeks or something of just being at home. When everyone went back to pre-season and everyone started uh, games, I didn't, I didn't play for the first probably three weeks of the season So before I joined Bristol. So I knew what it was like a little bit to be at home every day where if before that I didn't, so I was always out training in the mornings and Missed the, you know, taking the kids to school and then picking them up afterwards and stuff like that. So I did have, I do have a bit of experience of being in the house all the time. Um, but I think for the younger boys, especially for boys that are uh, from different countries and not with their family and stuff, it would be, you know, very difficult as everyone found it. But for me, I'm fortunate, you know, I've got a good space in my house and a good space in my garden and with the kids, we was all together. You know, it was okay. So uh, it's a bit frustrating. You can't do as many things as you want, but you know, I understood that I was in a fortunate position anyway, um, where it wasn't too bad. Um, in the homeschooling, that, that started off, so that was dominating most of the days. Um, it was all right. It was nice. Uh, you know, when, when you do your, um, your piece of exercise, whatever that is you do, I take my dogs for a walk and stuff, and you see other families out on bike rides and stuff. I think it's quite nice now that people, families, have had a bit of time to, to spend together, yeah. really. Uh, no, I, I, I do get you. We just lost you for a, a brief second there. Um, you're talking about doing exercise and things, and, and as you say, some are more fortunate than others with the big gardens and the, and the bigger houses and stuff. Were you able to to keep some form of training going on, just a bit, a bit basic weights or basic um, core fitness? Were you able to do that and keep ticking over both physically and mentally? Yeah, we had um, we got we had a full schedule, so we had um, we had group Zoom calls. A um, couple of times a week, and then we had our 
um, all of our running that we had to do, our gym work, um, which was, you know, you could do it in your front room. I, I've got a gym in mind, so I was quite lucky. I, as I say, I got the space to do a lot of stuff. Um, and I was doing that before anyway, in that period that I said about. So it wasn't that, you know, different for me. But we had, a, um, I think we had a week off or two weeks off maybe. And we had a full schedule of, of what we was doing. So, you know, hopefully we're, we're still in good shape. Now, there's so much we can speak about, about where you are at Bristol and, and what's going to happen in the future. But I, I think we'll get there. I want to go way back and start at the other end uh, of your playing career because we're here with Stockport County Live as the conveniently placed scarf uh, yeah. kind of alludes to. Um, now, it's casting our minds back, but you were such an important, pivotal player for a reason that, that we'll speak about as the, as, the, as the evening goes on. But first and foremost, I think we should start with just your memories of the club. And what you remember of your time at Stockport County? Um, I got I, fond memories of Stockport, and it's and it's a club that you know I hold close to my heart. And I'm a bit disappointed with myself that when I moved back up to the northwest to, to sign for Everton, I haven't been down yet. I've, I have tried a couple of times in the fixtures where um, they didn't fall good. I had a game the same day or whatever, but you know it's a, it was my first professional team in a, in a first team environment lots of people there I still speak to, um, still friends with, have come across playing, you know, in my career. Um, and it was just, it's just, I think everyone's first club, they, they have a little bit more uh, affection for, and, and Stockport was my real first um, professional football club. And and we had, I had some bad times there, like, like you would anywhere, but it's outweighed massively just by, you know, when I think back, so many good memories of, playing at Edgeley Park, especially in the evening games and stuff. Now, we had on the show last week Peter Ward, uh, and most weeks, or, or every week in usual circumstances, we have Jim Gannon, who is, of course, current first-team manager, as he was um, way back when you were playing. And Peter Ward, in particular, last week when we spoke to him, he was so complimentary. He was telling us stories about in training, um, and about how you would feed off the other lads and how you would fit into that vibe. A lot of county fans, especially because of what happened with the nine in a row and then with what happened with the season after with promotion, a lot of county fans see this Jim Gannon, Peter Ward thing as almost like a dream team of management. What was it like for you to, to play with them? Well, for, for me personally, I'd just come uh, off the back of not really playing for the whole season under Chris Turner. So then yeah. the Jim came in um, and he pulled me to the side and he said, like, I'm going to start playing you. I think you're a good player. And as a young kid, my confidence was, you know, I always had confidence in myself, but when you haven't played all season, it's, it's going to take a hit. And he just come in and said that straight away. And I just felt that he always believed in me. And you know, we all know what Jim's like. He's ultra serious and ultra competitive. And, and, and you know, he's got his, um, he, his personality, which I think for us at the time was perfect. You know, he was forward thinking. You know, some of the things that he talks about, was speaking about then, you know, people are only talking about now. So, um, you know, he was one of the best managers that I had, really. And then, and then Wardy was just a perfect, you know, partner in crime for him. He's, you know, just a proper footballing guy, and always cracking jokes, fun to be around, you know, but at the same time was serious when he needed to be. But I think the two of them just, just worked brilliantly together. You, you mentioned Chris Turner, though. It was going to be a question for you. Obviously, you came in, if I'm not mistaken, under Sammy McElroy, uh, Chris Turner and Jim Gallon. What was the... What was the difference that kind of stood out between those three managers? Very different styles between the three. Um, what do you remember of, of the dynamics that each one of them brought to the table? Um, I, I can't, if I'm being you know, honest, I can't remember Sammy McElroy so much, but I do remember certain things with him because he was the, the one that signed me. And I remember more of a, on a personal level with Sammy McElroy that um, I just always thought he was a good guy, an honest guy. And... Um, I can't remember the football too much, if I'm being honest. Um, under Chris Turner, for me, it wasn't such a good time, as I've mentioned. Yeah. Uh, and I don't really remember the football so much either. But I do remember clearly the football we played under Jim Gannon. That's, that's probably like most fans, really. But I remember the Jim Gannon football, um, you know, like, like it was yesterday. It was just a breath of fresh air. We was winning games. We was playing at a good level. We had a good team. Um, and obviously... You know, we got promoted and I left, but we got promoted. And um, and as you say, we broke some records in that period. Um, I just remember the whole, you know, when, when Jim came in, the whole place just changed and it just got a massive lift. 
when when you think about those days and especially the, the players that were around you in the team then to think that you were going to sign for Stockport County you mentioned it was your first pro club when you're that youngster you know you're making a break in football you realize that you've got the ability you've got the belief um and a club like Stockport County coming off for you that first contract and I know so much has passed since then and you've done so many tremendous things playing at the very highest level but Cast your mind back to those days when the very first, I don't know who it came through for an agent or family member or, or whatever, however these things happen when you, when you were youngster, Stockport County are going to sign you or they're going to make you an offer. What, what emotions do you feel like? Um, just, it, it's a bit, it's di- I think it's different from, I played for West Brom through, through the younger levels, the youth levels, and, and it's always nice, but you, 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 you know you're not there yet. You're not old enough anyway, and there's a lot of more work to do. And then um, I dropped out of it and then played for Hensford Town and then Stockport bought me, and it was a bit like... I remember going to sign with my mum and dad, and then um, I think we stopped at the Morrisons, the one near Edgley Park, and we were still there. And it was just like such a relief that, you know, from this day... It, you you can call yourself a professional footballer or you was a professional footballer. It was just, uh, I didn't know too much about the club before um, coming from the Midlands. And obviously as a kid, everyone watches the, you know, the top teams and everything. But once I got in there and stuff, um, I loved it. And I, I loved the area and uh, we're back in Manchester now. Um, and, you know, it's just probably always be our home now. So um, Stockport, it's like, it's, it's a club that even people that have never played or been at Stockport always talk to me about it. I think everyone everyone knows how big the club is and uh, everyone's quite fond of the club as well. You, you, you went on to achieve a lot, as did a, a load of the players that played around you. Did you, did you get a kind of feeling when, when you were in those teams, in that, that nine in a row, and, and obviously you've gone on to, to see these guys in the Premier League and at international level, but did you get a feeling that these guys, we're all destined for bigger things, hopefully with County, but you can just see that progression. I mean, as a fan, I could certainly see it. And like you say, growing up around these parts, you are often overshadowed by the bigger boys. But I'm trying to tell my friends, oh, we've got some players here that, you know, they could go on and play higher. Could you see that as a player? Not really. I think we, we were just living it and we were just enjoying it. And uh, we'd be with each, it was a little bit different then so we'd be with each other outside of football on nights out all the time we'd enjoy each other's company all the time we was a close close um, group of players really and uh, I didn't think I didn't really think I would go on to do to achieve what I've achieved and then when I look at everyone else you know I, I, I wouldn't have said Wayne Hennessy would go on to do what he's going to do I wouldn't say anyone really so it was weren't really something that was thinking I just enjoyed playing for Stockport County so yeah. We wanted to win, and it wasn't like oh, well, I'm trying to play good here. And and you know, a lot of players did get signed and go on to do different things and and whatnot. But it was never a case of, um, you know, look thinking, looking around the dressing room and thinking, well, we've got some some big players, potentially big players in there. We just that we knew we was good. We enjoyed each other. We enjoyed playing with each other. And you know, we was just living the the game from from game to game, really. I've got to ask you about one goal in particular. and This is a career where I could ask you about several that you've scored in various pictures over the last few years. But one goal against Rochdale, with all due respect to Rochdale, it's, it's not a team in the Euros. It's not a, they're never going to be in the Premier League, or certainly not anytime soon. But when you score a goal of this level of quality, it doesn't matter who it's against. That was something special. And if you don't, which I'm sure you do, but just to refresh your memory, if you don't, the ball comes into you just inside the Rochdale half. You've taken a few steps further forward and just put your laces through it. Yeah, I can, of course I remember it. I think it's probably still <laughs> my best goal. It's probably the only one I've ever scored outside the box. Um, and uh, I'm still, you know, really good friends with um, Tess Bramble. So we talk about it a lot because he still annoyed me. I ignored him on the celebration. So I think uh, he tells me I went past him on the celebration. So, um, yeah, I, I, I won't forget that one. My mum's got the, uh, the football boot, actually, that I wore that day. In, uh, really? House, yeah, so she's got that with the gold, with some, uh, some writing on it with the gold. But, yeah, that was um, not often as a defender you get to score good ones. And that, that was probably my best one. Yeah. When... when... When did the idea come into your mind? Because I can't accept it. When you first started trotting forward, you were thinking, well, in 30 seconds, I'm going to be wheeling away. But as you get a bit closer, and you must, I'm, I'm guessing you just saw the line open up. 
just I'm not even going to think about what the manager might say to me if I try this and it, and it goes over into row Z or whatever. What, just if you can, <laughs> try and relive that moment in your mind. I probably wasn't thinking too much, to be honest. I, 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 don't even, I couldn't even tell you why I hit it because it was really far out. But <laughs> what I can tell you is I've tried shooting from that distance many times since and it's never gone anywhere near the goal. So I'm not sure really. I've seen it. I've seen it a few times. Um, I don't know. There is like some video footage knocking about of it somewhere. So uh, I, I have seen it a few times, but I don't know why. I don't know why I shot that day, but um, it couldn't have gone any better. It was like top corner. And as I say, I've not been able to replicate it since. When it's all said and done and you're sitting around the fire with the grandkids, is that, is that one of the ones you're going to pull out? Okay, it's, <laughs> it's not international level or Premier League, but... Just come and have a look at this. Look what your granddad did. Yeah, because it, uh, even my kids now, and they like go on YouTube and stuff, and they, they say, oh, you scored, your, your goals were headers. And I'm like, not all of them. And one <laughs> of them was outside the box, actually. <laughs> now, when, when, when we think back to those teams, and uh, I'll bring up the nine in a row in more detail in a few minutes, but that nine in a row and that promotion team, a lot of county fans, a lot, certainly a lot of younger county fans will say that was the best county team they've seen. And, you know, it had the, the young manager, Jim Gannon, coming through and it had players like yourself and Anthony Pilkington and, uh, and Wayne Hennessy in goal, like you mentioned a moment ago. There will be an older generation of fans who, who often romanticise about the, the team in the 90s that got to the semi-final of the League Cup and, you know, were kind of knocking on the door of the championship playoffs as they're now known. And there's often a bit of tug of war. I don't suppose you can really fairly compare the two teams. But the reason I bring it up is someone who was in that team is now the physio at Wales. Uh, Sean Connolly, staple player for Stockport County over 10 years. And I, we had him on the show the other week. And I just, I can't help but, but hope, I guess, that there's some kind of Stockport County conversations that go on there between yourself and Sean. And obviously, Wayne from Williams is in the squad. And Wayne Hennessy comes in the squad. OK, there's bigger fish to fry, I guess. But does County ever come up? All the time, for, for starters, I'll answer that one for you. We would have smashed them. I tell him all the time, we would have smashed his <laughs> team. Um, but yeah, we talk about it all the time. Const probably every single Wales camp that I've been on for the last four years, Wayne Hennessy has told Gareth Bale that, about that record every single time. Yeah, you've done all this, but did you get nine clean sheets in a row? Every single time, without fail. And we talk about it all the time. Like me and Sean always talk and Wayne. But there's so many lads knocking about. I turn up to Bristol and Tommy Rose playing there. It's like wherever you oh, wow. go, you see, I, I speak to Damien Allen all the time. Um, just wherever you go, one, there's, there's someone you played with or, or whatnot. And two, wherever I go, there's Stockport County fans everywhere, everywhere. It's like... You just won't believe it. Wherever I go, I bump into a Stockport County fan. Or I'm, I'm like, wow. You just get everywhere. There's, there's so many of them for a club that's in the position that they're in at the minute, for a team that's in a position. The fan base is so big. And I think, um, it's quite, I remember the other day, we was, the TV was on and whatever, what's her name? Um, did you hear about that one? Michelle Keegan, is that her name? She yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what's yeah. going on? It's everywhere. Like, <laughs> Honestly, it's just such a big club and like um, we always, at Wales, like it's, it's a theme. We'll always talk, especially with Sean. Like I'm so close to Sean. I've known him for so many years and stuff. And, um, you know, me, Wayne, Sean, we'll always be talking about Stockport. Now, it, it's funny that you mentioned Gareth Bale and Wayne Hennessy having that conversation. Um, I'm guessing Gareth Bale never has a comeback, by the way. Of course, how could, how could you try and come back from that? Does it, like, like, I agree with Wayne, doesn't matter what you've achieved. I'm not even sure Gareth would have got into that team. But uh, moving forward, about, about the nine in a row, uh, when, when you look back, and I mean, I, it's, it's great for me, doing this job as a county fan is great for me, because when we have legends come on the show from any era, I get to sit on YouTube for a few hours and relive those days, you know, relive the, the highs and the lows, you know, when we, and this almost happened or, or that nearly come off. The nine in a row was just something I was so fascinated to look back on because it's just, when you, when you think about what has gone into winning nine games on the spin without conceding a single goal, I mean, what an achievement, well, just what an incredible achievement. Yeah, and especially if you think that, you know, just before that, 
the season before and stuff where, you know, how far we'd come to achieve something like that and just such a, a well-drilled team. Um, you don't get that at any level, really. You know, it's not often you see that anyway. We just knew our position so well. We knew what was being asked of us. We knew exactly what to do. And it's rare to see that in football. And um, I think it's credit to the staff and, and, and Jim, obviously, that, you know, we, he'd set us up that way. Um, and it was just, we were just on a roll. And, but you know that it's, something's coming. And if, if I'm not mistaken, was it a Test Bramble own goal? Did it come off his head or something? Yeah, the, the, the one that eventually broke yeah. the run. Yeah, and you knew it would be something like that. But um, I think that team was, you know, probably maybe the best one that I played in at Stockport. And I, obviously confidence was sky high going through that. And it was just like every week we'd go out and we just, we just knew what we were supposed to do. And, and, you know, as a player, that's half the battle. Did that set you up, I guess, in many ways to, to go, on achieve, go on and achieve what you did? Because... Yeah, OK, I I'm not, I'm not, can't argue, of course, I, I wouldn't dream of. that. It was a great team and it was, there was so many, um, so many quality players in there. But, I mean, you're the central defender in that. I mean, obviously part of a, a partnership, but ultimately it's the defence that has, that has to keep nine clean sheets on the run. So both yourself and the goalkeeper, absolutely pivotal roles there. And as you say, it's still fairly early in your career. Has that... Given you experiences, that have you learned from that, if you like, to then go on and take these lessons to the Championship, to the Premier League, to international level? Yeah, definitely. I think that that's um, it's stuck with me. And I think that, you know, for me, um, being a centre-back majority of the time, um, it's just what I live for, you know, clean sheets are everything and you don't always get them. And it's always annoying if you don't get the clean sheet. So we could win 4-1 and I'm annoyed that we, we conceded one goal. So I think that that clean sheet mentality, and I do think it's a mentality. We all had it in that yeah. in that exact team, um, and it's you know you got to try and breed it throughout all the other teams that you play for, and try and you know for me as the leader of majority of the teams that I played for, to try and breed that clean sheet mentality throughout the team, especially within your unit um, in defence. So you know I think that did set me up. You know as you say, at such a young age to to you know to take pride in that. Now, when it came to to moving on from county, like you say. You, you were, you were part of that tremendous team, but the, the, the move was a bit of an interesting one because it came halfway through the season, if you like, or even further on from that, on loan initially. Um, and I know that you've obviously built up a great relationship with Swansea um, through the seasons, and, and why wouldn't you have? But when that move first came around, what, what emotions were going through your mind then? Because, OK, great move, not going to take that away, but at the same time, you, you're leaving the first professional club where you've achieved so much, just just kind of talk us through that a little bit. Yeah, it was it was a weird one for me as well. I just played for Wales and made my debut for Luxem against Luxembourg, and then the next day I signed for Swansea. As you say, I think it was in March uh, on loan, yeah, was, and it yeah. was a little bit like Swansea were in League One, but I think they was top, so it looked like they was going to go to the Championship. I really wanted to play in the Championship, like that was the level that I thought you know trying to aim at. Um, so I kind of took a bit of a gamble that they'd finish it. Um, they'd, f they'd still get promoted by the end of the season. At the same time, a lot of people were talking about um, myself maybe going to such and such or uh, this team are interested if I wait to the end of the season. So it was a little bit weird. And then I remember signing and driving back from Swansea to the Midlands. And I didn't know if I was gutted or happy or what. It, like, the realisation of especially because I'd been with Wales the week before and the, the realisation of that was the first time I'd ever moved club from my first club. And it was a bit like, well, you're never going to go back to that training ground again or you're never going to play again at Edgeley Park for, for Stockport. So it was like, I was a little bit gutted about it, but at the same time, I'm happy that I'd, I'd signed to a team that potentially go into the championship. But yeah, there was a there was a few mixed feelings, especially with just the realisation. When it was done and dusted and it signed, I was happy to start that, but I was just a little bit gutted that, that wow, that's, uh, that period is over now. Let's just talk about a little bit about your career post-county then, because, it, it, I mean, it's tremendous what you've achieved. To, to go on and play at international level, to, to go on and win promotion to the Premier League, I was going to ask you about the, the beginning of each phase, but I guess the, the main question I want to get, which, which level of excitement is higher? Is it signing your first pro 
football contract ever. You are now a professional footballer. Is it getting an international call up, or is it realizing you're going to be a Premier League player? Because I find that fascinating. Um, for me personally, it was it was the realizing that I'd be a Premier League player. I think that was all the all the steps were leading up to that. So I, I never I never dreamed that I'd play international football. So that was never on my list, if that makes sense. I, I always wanted to be a professional football player. I'd say what was higher than signing the contract at Stockport was making my debut against Hartlepool because that was, I'd played then. I'd played a professional football game and even if it was just one, well, I've played one at least. But I think yeah. when I went to the Premier League, that was like, you know, when people ask, was there ever a moment you thought you'd made it? Well, I knew I'd made, I didn't make it then, but it was like, well, you're there. And I knew I'd play for Swansea. Um, and I knew that in a few months I was going to play a Premier League game, you know, without without getting injured if I didn't get injured. So that was the, that was a big moment when we won at Wembley. That just, I suppose, since being a kid, I, I can't lie and say I dreamed of playing for Stockport or Swansea, but I dreamed about playing in the Premier League. So it was like your dreams are, will come true now. So that that was a big moment for me. I mean, it's just incredible how how different is the Premier League and this. Maybe this is ask a silly question. Well, how different is the Premier League from League Two? What just what differences stand out? Uh, well, uh, the football is the obvious one. As a player, I think that the football is just so um, it's just so fast, and uh, everyone is of such a high level. It's unforgiving if, as a defender, you know, you, you can't you can't really afford to make one mistake. Um, but just everything that goes around it, really, I think that your life, you just get thrust straight into the public eye. Um, everywhere you go, then if someone knows you, you can't walk around anymore um, without somebody knowing who you are and speaking to you or wanting a picture. And I think just the, the differences from the championship to the Premier League is just you're kind of your you're public property then once you play in the Premier League. When you, when you get inside the changing rooms, what... I guess the other end of the spectrum. What is, what what what's the same? Because ultimately, you're still eleven players with a manager. How does Jim Gannon's team talk differ to maybe those that you've you've sat and listened through of, of Premier League managers? What 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 what's the same there? Yeah, nothing. I think in essence, it's exactly the same. So as you say, if you take all the glitz and the glam away from it, you are just you know twenty two players. You're going to get shouted out at half time or or not. Uh, there's going to be fights at half time. Just, just whatever, really. And it's, it's the same game that you played as a kid, really, at school, you know, when you really take everything away from it. And I do think it's important for as a player to do that. So, you know, take away the fact that you're going to be on match of the day tonight and in the morning and all day on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. Forget all of that. You're just playing against another 11 men that are really good. So it, it's not that different. You know, football's football at the end of the day, and that's the beauty of it. And I think that's why... You know, when there's a, there's a game, say if there's a League Two game on TV, people will watch it because it's the same game. Um, so, you know, I, I, do, I, I don't think that, you know, once you take all the, all the outside bit of it away, it, it, there's no difference really. Did, did you watch the first time you were on Match of the Day? Did you make a point of watching? Um, I would. I think, I, would. So, yeah. I think so. We had City, my first Prem game was City Live. Uh, on a Monday night, we had the Monday night game and we lost 4-0, but we was nil-nil at half-time, so that was a win for us, Swansea. <laughs> so, uh, I think Aguero got a hat-trick in his debut, but I think I'll watch that one back. But it's not nice to, for me, with my accent, it's not nice to watch yourself back on an interview ever. <laughs> that sounds fine. Well, just finally, let's talk about like where you are now. Um, so the season has, I don't know, maybe ended, maybe we pick it back up, I'm not too sure. Uh, but you're kind of well, you, you, there's Premier League ambition there uh, with where you are now in Bristol. Just just talk us through what's going on there. Yeah, no, it's um, it's a good, you know I've really enjoyed the season up to up to where we got. Um, I've enjoyed the city; it's a lovely city. Um, I've enjoyed being down here. The managers, Lee Johnson, played against him for years. Um, really good manager, young. We're not that different different uh, in age. Um, nice fans really good set of lads. I think the club reminds me a little bit like Swansea when I first went in there. 
you know, they're ready. They've kind of built it, they've built it up now where they're ready. And um, obviously, you know, there's no secret made to the fact that Bristol want to get promoted from the start of the season, which I think is great. Um, and as there's in uncertainty yet, but if we play this season out, you know, that will be the aim. Do you, do you think, I mean, have you heard any inkling of any nudges or of what might happen towards the end of the season? Do you think it will get played out? Do you think you will get that opportunity to roll the dice? Uh, we, I don't, we don't know. We just got to prepare like it is and then let the decision makers make the decisions. Uh, all we can do is control what we can control, which is get yourself fit and ready mentally um, to play the last nine games. And, uh, and on international level, what are your thoughts there? Just, just play as long as you can? Yeah, no, I've not, you know, I haven't really. As soon as the, the Euro, as soon as this kicked off, I knew the Euros would probably be cancelled. So then I was, it's just, you know, trying to finish the season with Bristol and then, and then see what happens really. The Euros will be next year, so they say. So, so we'll see. Um, but like with Wales, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Um, it just sort of some, always be within me, you know, Wales. And when I do retire, it, you know, I'll probably be back in the fold somewhere. So I don't know. I haven't even thought, I haven't spoke to the manager at all. I don't know what his plans are. It's not something that I'm, I know I've got time now to, you know, before those games start off again. So uh, I don't know when we'll have an international, but um, I'll make that decision as well when, when that time comes. Yeah, but it seems you're happy. You're, you're like you say, you're doing well and you're playing football. I've also just got to ask you. We spoke about it briefly before we came on air. Uh, I think I read that you you're a vegan now. What 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 in, what uh, can, what inspired that choice? Yeah, well, we've been plant based for about three years now, and um, I can't lie and make something up. We just watched what the health, the documentary, what the health, like a lot of people did at the time. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to see if I can do it. Go plant based for four weeks. And after about a week, I just knew, oh, this is for me. I feel way better. And it's, been, it's about three years now. So, um, and as it went on, I just, you know, it's a double, double reason, really. One, I feel better. And two, as soon as I stopped eating uh, animal products, I, it, the thought of it just felt so weird to me that I was like, oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't go back even if I wanted to now. So, yeah, yeah it works for me. Um, and I'm happy with that. And, you know, my kids are the same. Um, so yeah, it's a, you know we're we're vegan household and that's it. Happy days. Well, I, I really do thank you for your time today. Uh, I'm going to sign off with a question that I have to ask just uh, as a final note. Um, Stockport County in the future, is there any possibility that we could see Ashley Williams down the line don a shirt again? I don't know. Maybe I did always say I'd try and go back for one season. So you never know. But what, what I can guarantee is that I'll be down there um, once the games start going and stuff and uh, show my face and not be a stranger anymore. Oh, well, listen, Ash, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, the day you do come, uh, allow us to welcome you with open arms, bring you up into the radio studio, get a, a few words there and then as well. No problem. Thank you.